I would like to comment on the so-called demonstration and the demonstration that Sandy Smith referred to in her presentation. You'll remember we were at a site visit and we were told by Todd Morey that they intended to do a balloon display, but it was too windy. We were then told at a, a subcommittee, a standing committee meeting, when John Cunningham answered, he says, I don't think you want to put anything up on that roof. We then, I say we, my client and I, we drafted a letter, we sent to them there was ways that we thought they could be amply demonstrated without going on the roof, and it could be shown. And after some time, suddenly they're on the roof with scaffolding, planks, frames. Now, what ended up getting put up there is inaccurate. It does not show the entire roof line of this project. And anyone who thinks otherwise needs to think again. And don't be, you know, lied to by the times that said that the scaffoldings represent anything. They would represent the places where poles were to go. If you look at this pole right here, this is the Bordelaro building. That pole right there, I assume, since it starts at the other end of the ridge line, near the bird's eye tower, is supposed to be the end of that project, that ridge line, over by Fort Square. When you look at the plan, you'll see it comes within 15 feet of Fort Square. That pole is nowhere near 15 feet from the uh, Fort Square area. <coughs> now this property here, there's been a lot of uh, discussion about how this fits, and that goes to the consistency with neighborhood character. If you look at the, uh, go back to one, on Guadalajara, okay, this, this, this uh, picture was shown by, uh, I think it was Sandy Smith. The Guadalajara building to the peak, to the bottom, is 17 feet high. The hotel, okay, so there's 17 and here's the ground. This image, that's 61 but that's 17. This is a Photoshop of the worst degree in trying to make that look like that fits. You do the math. The next picture, please. This is a picture which is again shown. Now you look, this is the existing bird's eye building and the freezer building. Look at the top corner over here. And that on the existing conditions plan is at a height of 29 feet. That's right on the existing condition plan that was submitted in the application. So that's 29 feet, and if you carry it over by the telephone pole, 29 feet, it almost is at the top of the Mazda house. This was incidentally the picture that was in the Times today. Here's ground level. Next photo. So that's 29. There's 61. Womp womp. Anyone who wants to use this magic to make this look like cheese, it fits, doesn't it? Next. Interesting picture. Again, submitted with the application. Look over here. There's kayaks. Kayaks up at this area here. There's also a dark spot right in that location on the plan. That's existing. Now watch what happens to the two spots when the, when the image is placed. First of all, the kayaks are gone. So they're presumably under the seawall. And look how much closer the building is here to the dark spot. Now you've been told all along the building's being pushed back. The demonstration for compatibility with the site pushes it all forward. Next application. This is another picture. In fact, this was sort of the picture that appeared in the paper with all the signatures under it. Again, look at the Fabazza building here and look at the Favaza building there. Now, when you go to the, this picture here, you'll see that there's a space between the Favaza building and the, the building at the end. Now go back one, Joel, please. Okay? See where the building comes down? This section is going to be right up against the Favaza building. Those people who stood at the site visit with us, did it look like there was going to be a space between the edge of the building and the other? No. Forward. See what's happened? Probably worn out. <laughs> the 
the building, what they did was they took the section to this side of the Favaza building, and you'll see there's people walking in a car, and they transposed that over here. Whoa. Again, if, you know, this is not a perfect science, but one has to really question, when you try to make everything fit, and you try to make sure it make it look like no one's jammed on someone else, you got to do a little better than that. Next. <laughs> now we get the, the issue of the shadow study. Shadowing, overshadowing is another requirement that's supposed to be avoided in the ordinance. What they submitted initially was only one day, three pictures.